Magnetic resonance imaging is just better than CT when it comes to demonstration of masses in the posterior fossa. That's because of the artifacts that appear on head CT arising from the dense bones of the skull base and dental implants or fillings. These artifacts will degrade the imaging frequently in non-intuitive ways. The problem is quite evident in this patient with the known posterior fossa mass. These alternating white and dark lines are due to artifacts arising from the skull base and fillings in the teeth, and they obscure the tumor. The three most common adult extraxial tumors in the posterior fossa, that is the space below the tentorium, are the meningioma, vestibular schwannoma, and epidermoid. Elsewhere in the brain, meningioma remains the most common extraxial tumor, although you should keep in mind that it can be hard to distinguish from metastatic tumors involving the dura or bone in patients with cancer. Arachnoid cysts are not strictly tumors, but can have mass effect like solid masses. This magnetic resonance image demonstrates a small vestibular schwannoma. These are histologically benign nerve sheath tumors arising from the eighth cranial nerve. These tend to occur initially within the internal auditory canal, as shown here. When they grow larger, they can extend into the adjacent CP angle cistern and compress the brain stem while the tumor is still evident in the internal auditory canal. This patient's magnetic resonance scan demonstrated an extraaxial mass that is largely on the patient's right, but crosses the midline and does not involve the internal auditory canal. These findings argue against the diagnosis of a vestibular schwannoma, and this proved to be a meningioma. Keep in mind that all meningiomas and schwannomas enhance on magnetic resonance imaging, but can have cystic areas that do not enhance. This patient has a left-sided posterior fossa mass that displaces the middle cerebellar peduncle. This mass did not enhance, so meningioma and vestibular schwannomas are not considerations. While the mass resembles cerebrospinal fluid on this MR image, both arachnoid cysts and epidermoid tumors can resemble fluid on both CT and MR. In this case, the MR diffusion scan established the diagnosis of an epidermoid tumor since an arachnoid cyst should be dark and resemble CSF elsewhere on the image. This patient shows a different CP angle mass at the level of the internal auditory canal, seen here on the T1 weighted MR image. But in this case, the mass on this diffusion weighted image has the same signal as CSF in the fourth ventricle. This proved to be an arachnoid cyst, which is simply a collection of cerebrospinal fluid that usually does not require treatment. Usually, the combination of CT and MR and the use of intravenous contrast will allow you to correctly predict the nature of posterior fossa extraxial masses. Consider this patient who presents to the emergency room with dizziness. His CT scan demonstrated a low attenuation mass, but poorly seen on the CT scan. But you know it's there by the loss of the fourth ventricular contour. Based on the CT scan alone, this mass could be intra or extraxial in location. The T1-weighted MR scan of this patient demonstrated that the lesion has a sharp border with the brain. While the mass appears to be surrounded by brain, you now know to be skeptical of this observation when based on a single view. That's especially true with masses at the periphery of the brain and at the midline. Contrast-enhanced MR imaging demonstrated that this lesion did not enhance at all. That observation makes meningioma and schwannoma very unlikely since both usually enhance with intravenous contrast. This midline mass has very high signal intensity on this diffusion-weighted MR image. When you consider that the lesion does not enhance, its location in the midline, and its high signal intensity on diffusion-weighted imaging, even though this is not a typical location for it, you can conclude that this tumor is an extraaxial epidermoid. While you will not be able to predict the type of every extraaxial mass, accurate localization of the mass to the extraaxial space will allow you to limit the possibilities considerably. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.